Hi, and welcome to the second video in our PowerShell with Elasticsearch tutorial series. So in the last video, we went over how to install Elasticsearch and really just get that all configured on Ubuntu. So this is actually the first video where we're actually going to be using PowerShell to interact with our Elasticsearch. And the only thing that we're really doing in this video is really just connecting to it executing the very basic um, get command on the entire Elasticsearch. So it'll give us our version um, and basically just a very simple tagline of, you know, search. Uh, and that will just be sure that you can actually connect it to, to your Elasticsearch. And then this way in the future videos, uh, when we're creating the different mappings and indexes and adding items, deleting items and searching for items, that you know that it will actually work. Uh, so if this video, if you actually encounter a failure in this video, please refer back to the first video and maybe even the Ubuntu uh, installation through with VirtualBox. Please watch those two videos. Those videos will clarify anything that might not be set up exactly correct um, because we changed some of the networking options um, and also did a few configurations in the config files for Elasticsearch. So you're just going to want to make sure that all those are correct. So before we actually start this video, what you're always going to want to make sure is that your Ubuntu box is running and started. Uh, so as you can see here, my Ubuntu YT for YouTube is actually running. And if I just go into this box here and type in my password, uh, what we need is the IP address. So we haven't assigned a static IP address to our Ubuntu box. This is something that you could do if you really wanted. Um, in our case, I'm not really going to worry about that too, too much. We just really need to know the IP address and we can actually just use that. Um, so to get the IP address, let me actually just go over that again here. So at the top right, there's going to be uh, yours might not be a question mark. Mine is a question mark right now, but it'll be like three little boxes connected by lines. And then you're just going to be a wired connected. And then there should be a wired settings. Once you have that open here under wired, you're going to have a little gear icon. If you just click on that, it'll pop up details and you can actually see your IP address. So my IP address for my Ubuntu box right now is 172 dot birdie dot 123 dot 17. Uh, so we're going to need that to connect to our Ubuntu box through Visual Studio Code because that is going to be the address we use for our API call. So the first thing that we want to do, of course, in our PowerShell script is we're going to have to define our username and our password for our Elastic instance. So I'm going to create um, a variable called username here. And I'm actually just going to put the value of Elastic since we are going to be using the default username. And then we're going to create another variable called password. And we are going to put in the password that the script gave us. So uh, we should have copied that down. If you haven't, um, you're going to need to find that or just basically redo the setup. Um, but in that setup video, I do mention to just keep note of that. I have it in a text file on my desktop just for easy, easy access. Now, the way that I would, the way that we're doing this right now is not something that I would recommend in a production setup. Uh, so this is just so you guys can see all the different steps because I want to show you guys how I put in the password. But what I would actually end up doing is you could store this um, in a CLI XML file that we've already done. I'm actually going to put the tutorial link to that CLI XML file just down below. And you can actually store the username and password in a CLI XML file. And then this way, at least you don't actually have to worry about having some plain text in here. Now you wouldn't store the username and password exactly, but I'm going to show you uh, what you could do. So the next step in creating our credential here is actually creating a variable called credential. And making this equal to, again, it's going to be equal to a string. And the way that we're going to need to do this is not a way that we've seen before, but the way that we need to do it is because we're going to have a colon in between, we actually need something to just split them up. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, dollar sign here, and we're going to do an open and closing curly bracket. 
And then in here, we're going to put user. And then we're going to put a colon. And we're going to put a dollar sign here again. We're going to do an open and close curly bracket. And we're going to put password in here. And this is going to be username. So if we actually run this here and we look at what our credential is going to be equal, it's going to be equal to elastic and then a, um, oops, uh, don't need a dollar sign here. So if we actually run this again and we look at credential, we will see that we have our elastic and then our password. So the first thing that we actually have to do is because when we're passing it through the API, we actually need the credential in a base 64. So what we need to first do is convert our credentials into a um, the bytes of our credentials. So let's actually go ahead and let's create a variable called credential bytes. And we're going to make that equal to system dot text dot encoding. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a colon colon and we're going to do ASCII dot get bytes. And we are going to get it on the dollar sign credential. So if we actually run that here and we look at our value now for credential bytes, this will be uh, the bytes for our string of credential. And then what we're going to want to do after that is actually just convert that into base 64. So we're going to go base 64 credential and we are going to make that equal to a system dot convert to base 64 string and we are going to put our credential bytes in there so if we actually run all of this now and we look at the base 64 credential we have this string here now this is what i would actually end up storing in a cli xml file or anything like that uh, this way, the CLI XML file will already be locked um, to the user. Uh, so to the user and the computer, I go over all the different types of securities, or you can also store this in a password vault or anywhere that you can retrieve it safely without actually inputting a plain text password in your scripts. This way, someone can't connect to it and do uh, malicious actions. Uh, and then what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to create our basic auth header here. So we're going to do a basic auth header and we are going to make that equal to basic dollar sign base 64 credential. And then all we're going to do is we're going to then create our header object. So I like to name it headers and we're going to make that equal to a hash table here. And we are going to do a authorization equals basic off header. And then what we need to do is in double quotes, we're going to need to put content type. And the content type for Elasticsearch is actually a little bit different. Um, you might be used to just doing like uh, text or application slash JSON. Uh, this is actually going to be application slash x dash nd json. Now I have had it work with just application slash json, um, but a lot of the documents actually recommend to use x dash nd json. And that's just going to be the formatting of the content that you're passing in. And then the only other thing that we need to do now is do an invoke dash rest method and then we're going to do a uri and then for the uri what we need to actually do is https colon backslash backslash and then our ip address which is 132 uh, 172.30.123.17 and we're going to do a colon 9200 now again the https is because we left the ssl security on this is the ip address of our ubuntu box and then the colon 9200 specifies the port 9200 that our elastic search is running on 
the method is going to be a get. And then the headers, we are going to pass in our headers variable here. And then the only other thing that we need to do is because if we actually run this right now, we're actually going to get an error message saying that the remote certificate is invalid according to the validation procedure. Now, this is because we are still using the self-signed certificate that Elasticsearch provided to us. If you did put in um, one of your actual certificates, this would work just fine. Um, but what we can actually do to skip this is actually skip certificate check parameter. Now, if you're using PowerShell 5.1, you actually have to do some extra work to do the skip certificate check. You actually have to end up creating a method but on PowerShell 7 or later, it's actually very easy. I think even in PowerShell 6, you might have this option of just doing the skip certificate check. And if we actually run all of this together now, we don't get an error message and we actually get all the information from our, um, from our server here. So we actually get all the, uh, the versioning options and our tagline. Uh, so everything actually is nice. What we can actually also do is put this in a variable called response and run that. And then what we can do afterwards is do a response and look at what is inside of this variable. We actually get our node, our cluster name, our cluster UUID, the version. So right now we are running a version 8.5.3. It'll give you the Lucene version, which is Elastic Search is built on Lucene, and then our tagline of you know for search. So if you can actually run this script um, exactly as it is here, with of course your username and password. If you just want to use the default Elastic username, which is the way that we've um, followed the tutorial so far, uh, just put in the password that you get when you set it up. This should actually work just fine and you will be able to connect it to your Elasticsearch. If you guys want me to go over um, how to actually store this securely in a script um, specifically for Elastic, please let me know. I don't mind doing that, but I will be posting a link to the CLI XML video because I think that, that is useful um, a lot for a lot of other things that you guys might be using passwords for like office 365 or azure or anything like that so please let me know if you guys want to see that video and in the next couple videos we're going to be seeing how to create mappings in elastic and how to add items and how to search for items in elastic search which can be very useful again if you want to use elastic search for logging or anything like that you can also use it kind of similar to a database it's very similar to like a NoSQL database um, so you can use it for that as well. You can store tons of data in documents and then pull those documents back. So hopefully that kind of helps you guys connect to Elastic through PowerShell. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know down below in the comment section and I will try to help you guys out to the best of my ability. Um, or if it's something actually a little bit more gen uh, generic in general, I can make a video to help a multitude of people. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.